Hey, what's up, how's it? Aloha, it is me, Makani. Welcome to Culture Rise. This is where we get a chance to talk story, sit down and share and talk culture with some of my friends, some guest speakers, some everyday Hawaiians, and find out how culture is involved in our lives. Uh, humbled and privileged to be sitting across from this brother. Uh, him and I are usually on a stage. <laughs> We're usually entertaining <laughs> tourists and entertaining people, but uh, something interesting about him. That's why I wanted to bring him on. Uh, how's about a round of applause, my good friend Andrew Kalani Simeona? How are you, brother? Oh, pretty good. Um, <laughs> How, how's it man. been? First of all, before we get started, uh, of course, because we are cultured people, and I'm going to present to you uh, a lei kukui, but oh, I do I'm have to present me. it to you in a way that they told me to at the CDC. Yes. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so that is for you, the lei kukui. You oh. can either put it on, but I don't want to mess up the Tahitian pearls oh. on the neck. <laughs> man, look at you. You're all like uh, just, what, what do they call that? Flossing with your pearls? Oh, my gosh. Did you pick those pearls? No, actually, I got it from, um, I think I bought a, a vendor, like uh, one of the Havas that competed for, I think, 2014-ish. Yeah, We're, we're going to get into all the dance yeah. things about us. So something that's interesting, the reason why I wanted to sit down with you is, um, you know, we talk culture all the time. Uh, first of all, where are you from? What ahupua'a, what moku? <laughs> so... Um, I guess just start at the beginning, like <laughs> as all great mo'olalos start. <laughs> so um, my my older brother and my sisters and like mom and dad, they're from here. Uh -huh. However, they moved to um, Washington before I was born and then had me Washington State. Uh -huh. And then a couple months after, um, a house opened up near my grandparents. So mm -hmm. like they moved back to Oahu. To Oahu. Yes. Wow. Where in Oahu? Um, Kalu. Holy country. Yes, very country. And you're still there now? Well. <laughs> kind of. You're, you're, you're on the Ko'olau Poco side. Yes. Or Ko'olau Loa side, that would be, right? Yeah, uh -huh. so like we moved like kind of like central Kaneohe side. Mm -hmm. um, kind of a big change because me, I'm a country boy. <laughs> so like when I when I keep on hearing like cars pass or like, you know, like. You cringe. Big, yeah. So, like, so coming here today, you were freaking out. Yes. Like there's a lot of <laughs> so from Kahalu, um, grew up there. What was it like growing up in the home? Uh, we all, I always ask this question. I always talk about it because some of us, you know, culture wasn't blatantly in our face. Like our, our, our tutu or our grandparents or parents didn't pull us on the side and was like, this is how you need to be as a Kanaka. This is how you need to be as, as whoever you are. Was it like that at home or is it, was it more observation of what your, your parents or your grandparents did? What so, was culture like for you? So it was more um, observation, mm -hmm. really a curiosity because mm -hmm. um, as as some families over here, they um, like both parents are working. It's mm -hmm. like a real big struggle, like, mm -hmm. you know, trying to live in paradise. <laughs> <laughs> so so both parents were like working and um, my grandparents that are that were living they're they're Filipino, they're full mm -hmm. Filipino. So I never really did have that cultural side like. But what about the beginning. Filipino side? Did, there, was there a lot of things on the Filipino side that they taught you or you observed from them that, that you have in your adult life now? Yes, it was like, um, it was like there'll be like little like superstitions, <laughs> like Filipino superstitions. Like my grandma used to always tell me like, no, don't do that. <laughs> don't worry. You'll be taken away. <laughs> like your, your house had the wooden spoon and fork on the wall. Yes, basically. <laughs> the, the, the wooden karabao next to the, the see. So all the, see, all those things, that it's, it's funny. We, we don't think about it back then, but they're very cultural. So you had more of the Filipino side of, of your culture growing up. Or like was in, it in the beginning, uh -huh. it was more balanced. Like mm. um, probably when I got into like, right, like eight to seven year um, years of age, mm. where um, I started hanging around with like friends, and I also got to know like extended family that I was uh -huh. more into heavily mm -hmm. into Ike Hawaii. Uh -huh. So that's where I kind of like shifted. Did you find things that were similar, or was it you know with, with the Filipino side and the Hawaiian side? Did you find things similar, or was it different for you? Well. I would say more so um, with a cultural aspect side is um, is having ties with family. Mm. Yeah, so like um, everybody knew everybody in a sense or knew of like mm. their name and all that. We still kind of contact each other <laughs> like every now and then check up. Now what what high school did you go to? So I went to Castle High School. Castle High School. Yes. Uh, what are they, the, the Knights? Yes, yeah. Knights. Castle Knights. Um, was it... So wait, you from Kahalu? Would you catch the bus? 
Yes. Wow. So you went to Castle from Kahalu. Growing up in the country, was uh, Castle High School very country? Or was there a lot of culture, I should say, at Castle High School? Mm. Oh, what, whether, whether it's Ike Hawaii, whether it's Filipino, whether, or was it a good balance? You know, like my, um, kind of like my generation mm. over there, it was slowly shifting. Uh, yeah, so when I was there, um, me and like uh, my friends, we started the the Polynesian club. So, and we were really heavy with the Polynesian dance program mm-hmm. over there. So we'll do like maydays and like hoikes. <laughs> so it started to shift, and now it's continuing on like today. So it was high school that that. So we're gonna talk about being a dancer. It was high school that got you into that. Yes. Speaking of, you're from the Windward side. Got to say uh, mahalo to King Windward Nissan. Getting you out of your loan or your lease into a new vehicle. Got to thank Unique Low um, over there at the Alamoana uh, Shopping Center. Align Mortgage in Jams World. Giving us an opportunity to talk culture and share culture. Now, we're talking about dancing. You and I have danced. So yes. the, the urge and the, the, the drive to dance started in high school at Castle. You guys started a Polynesian club. Yes. What was the first dance? Tahitian or hula? That, that for you that you that you started doing oh i mean for me personally it started with hula first wow. and then um and then when i started to like you know progress in my high yeah. school years then i started going to tahitian and yeah. all the other cultures see I, I like place. was in your opinion what's more difficult i know people are going to be like what hula or tahitian i would have to say hula because oh, it's sorry. so so precise yes um, who did you learn uh, specifically from anybody hula uh, when you first started dancing? Um, so my high school kumu was um, Lehua Beltram Tivaga. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, um, she used to be um, she used to dance at um, Tihati's and like, even her husband. She, you know, like hula and like you know, for dancing, like it's a family affair. Like you, you bring the ohana in at some <laughs> point in time. <laughs> and as, so you started dancing, did, did that kind of inspire kind of what you're doing now? Because now you're, you are decided to study, uh, yes. Hawaiian, Ike Hawaii. Mm-hmm. Uh, was that, was that kind of the, the, the path from dancing? You just, what was it that made you think, man, I want to make this, I want to study Ike Hawaii mm-hmm. in a, in a university setting. What was it that, that pursued, or, or made you think that, that you wanted to do that? So, you know, I got to say, if I asked, like, the six-year-old me mm-hmm. back then, I would say I want to be an artist and go to school for art. But, <laughs> yeah. you know, as as the years went on, you know, growing up, um, what I really wanted, like, what I really wanted to do with um, Wake Hawaii is really study, like, literature, study, mm-hmm. like, media, storytelling, like, how um, how can we incorporate that? into today instead of only viewing it as something ancient or something you could like placing it ah, in that right, right, right. that Makes time sense. frame mm-hmm. so you're you're currently going to university of hawaii what, on what, break. yeah you're on a break yeah. right now what you've been in a bunch of programs though and you've actually been active on campus as far as the, the hawaiian culture goes uh did you go to did you go to hilo too no, I was about to, but okay. it was just like one, I didn't have family over mm-hmm. there. Two, because like of funds and all that. So what are you yeah. what are you studying? Uh, I was gonna say specifically. <laughs> I just had this conversation about it, specifically at University of Hawaii. So, um, so I'm majoring in um, Ike Hawaii, mm-hmm. and my concentration is Mo'olalo Weavey, which has to do with more the uh, literature, uh, media, storytelling side. Are you story. coming from a point where you want to collect stories, Mo'olalo, or you want to be the storyteller? Or create stories. Well, right now, like I really want to um, study how can we progress in our storytelling. Mm-hmm. So more like storytelling. Is is there, as you're studying now, from a cultural standpoint and an Ike Hawaii standpoint, are there people today that are creating new stories? I mean, we hear, like you said, we hear all these stories, these mo'olelo about Kavaka Hiko, about the old days. Is there anybody writing stories? So a hundred years from now will hear a story from today is anybody doing that right now um i mean that that was intense as back then right yeah because i mean if you look at the the new pepper the newspapers Uh like um they published all like these mo'olalos in a newspaper because of something that was occurring Mm -hmm. and and kind of current modern times so for me um 
I'm not too sure if like people are creating like mm-hmm. you know like new like mo'olas with a kua and all that but um you know right now it's like you have stuff going on such as the pandemic mm-hmm. or the um you know Mon so a, a hundred years from now we will be reading stories in a newspaper about uh, a hawaiian perspective of the pandemic uh, have you written any stories yourself or do, would you have a desire to author stories or haku haku stories well actually um i started reading um a new book that came out uh-huh. um nanaiki kumu so the version three yes version three that I'm is jealous. just like i didn't get it Ike bombs yes, like left yes. and right going on. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's put ourselves in the position of okay. So you and I are at a lua. We're on stage, right? Um, you know, we, we get deep into culture and we talk about cultural things. Um, sometimes it reminds me that we need to take a step back and and go to the the simplicity of who we are as as, as Hawaiian and cultural. Uh, not a lot of people know uh, the simple things like the word Hawaii, right? Everybody hears it. Everybody thinks it's it's just the place. But when you break it down, um, what? How would you explain to somebody not from Hawaii what Hawaii is as a word like ha, vai, and e? What would your mana on that be? Your thoughts? Oh, on Hawaii. I yeah. mean, so Hawaii to me is just um, the birthing sands of our ancestors. That's that's basically like how I how I view Hawaii because like. Again, like to a Hawaiian, you have generations upon generations mm-hmm. of your ancestors being born on this land. E- and even some people have, have ohana that's, that's still living on those grounds like today. The, the, yeah. the, the, the sands of our birth. Uh, I, I always remember this one that, that uh, uh, Kupuna have always told me. So whenever you say the word Hawaii, uh, you're automatically giving somebody three blessings, right? Ha, because it's our breath of life, right? Vai, and we know that vai, without water, we are nothing. That is the life-giving water. And e is actually for eel, or the uh, the, the akua uh, on high for eel. Uh, so Hawaii e is, is, is three blessings you give. Every time you say that word, you're blessing somebody three times with breath, with water, and akua. Um, aloha, we hear that word all the time. We throw it around at luau. So every time we, we, we entertain, we're like, oh, aloha, aloha. And people always like, hey, aloha. Um, in your mana'o, in your opinion, what, what is your, what is aloha to you? Oh, man. Aloha to me, like, it just encompasses, like, that's like, for me, it's like the granddaddy of all, <laughs> like, values of, uh-huh. of Ike Hawaii because, not only aloha is you know to express love to mm-hmm. to um to someone but also you know it is a way of life mm-hmm. like something to uphold something to like the words that i would associate like aloha to is like kuleana or you know being pono mm-hmm. um you know being on that righteous path so yeah. so kuleana of course our responsibility and pono uh, uh, just just doing things right uh when people come to Hawaii, that you know, they usually see us, which is which is always oftentimes funny because they they just think beach and luau, and they just see us shaking our thing. Um, <laughs> but it's always because I always try and make it a point to not only entertain uh, our visitor but educate them. What's one of the things you like to do when we're when we're entertaining uh, visitors, or or even even if they're they're local people? What is do you have one thing that you like to make sure that you share with them? I mean, besides entertaining them. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because part of, um, again, well, kind of like segue into like um, my experiences with UH, but I'd always like to, I guess, open a door for them of like, you know, like curiosity, like, right. oh, like I want to see like, like where are they dancing about? Like, because, mm-hmm. you know, there's there's a monologue right. before each. E- exactly. <laughs> so sometimes they see us and they have really no idea what we're dancing, mm-hmm. if that's Tahitian, if that's Hula, if that's Samoan. Uh, so I like that because so one of, one of your goals is to make sure they understand what you're dancing because mm-hmm. people come up to us right, yes. and be like, what was that all about? Mm-hmm. Right. Um, so another big thing that we have culturally for Ike Hawaii is, is value. So you already talked about kuleana, which is responsibility. Um, pono, which is just basically doing things right. What are, what other values to you are important that not a lot of people realize just generally? Oh, well, just generally, um, like one word answers or, like or just Hawaiian culture. And you know, like, um, uh, uh 
we talked Kuliana, we talked Pono, we talked Aloha, we talked uh, Ho'okipa, you know, mm-hmm. hospitality, being nice to people. Uh, are, were there values that you could share with people, um, Hawaiian values that you would want to share with people just so they, they see us in a whole different way rather than a couple guys in malos on the stage? Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I guess one of the values that that want people to understand is like Mo'okua which is like a, a genealogy, mm. like whether it be like literally um, as opposed to like, you know, family genealogy mm. or it can be knowledge base. Uh. Like who did your kumu learn from and like how did this, you know, practice came to be? So Mo'okua Oha meaning genealogy. A lot of times people think that genealogy is just direct family, but it, mm-hmm. it is, it's, it's what's your dance genealogy, mm-hmm. what is your art genealogy, who did you learn from, who did they learn from. So these are all these Hawaiian values that, yes. that I love about. And so that's a great thing about you studying Ike Hawaii because sometimes we, sh- we tend to only talk to the native Hawaiian demographic, but I always like to talk to the ones outside of that. Thank you very much for hanging out with me. Mahalo nui uh, Kalani for being here and taking the time out because I do gotta say, I called you last minute, right? <laughs> I called you last minute. He Ubered here from Kaneohe, so mahalo, yeah. mahalo for that. Uh, I'm gonna put us on the spot right now, because oh, no. you know, you, you know, you and I, when when we get into conversations about Iki Hawaii or about about Hawaii or Namea Hawaii about Hawaiian things, we go deep, right? Sometimes there's I have moments like I brain fart and I'm just like I I, I didn't even know these things, like the, the mm-hmm. simplest things about Hawaii. Like if if a visitor or a tourist came up to me in a show. And was like, uh, they asked me a simple question. I was like, oh, I don't even know. So we're gonna we're gonna put ourselves on the spot. And Kumu's sorry if we don't get this right. Uh, island colors and flowers. Are you good on those? Because that's that's like I, a simple question, right? Yeah. Because I can do colors. Let's start with <laughs> Moko Kiave, Hawaii Island, okay. Big Island. Yeah. Red. Red. Off the bat, red. What's their flower? Hey. hey. <laughs> um. Lehua, right? Oh my gosh! Oh, he, right? Oh, he, like, right? Am I right? Gonna, yes, got it. See? I'm gonna punch myself <laughs> in the face. Oh my gosh! Come on, they, 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 the the lehua they, it has its own pandemic right now, right? The, uh, the yeah. rapid ohia death. Anyway, okay, so Hawaii, anyway, we covered what's that? Um, uh, Maui o Piilani. Maui. Maui. That's pink. Yeah. Pink uh, flower. Uh, Poi Haole flower. Um, some some type of rose, right? Or no? Mm-hmm. It is the yeah. rose, the loki. Let's uh, loki lani. Loki lani. Look at that from the gallery. Uh, Molokai or Molokai, depending on who. Okay, so this is a on a tangent right now. Depending on who you talk to, do you say Molokai or Molokai? For me personally, uh-huh. I say mo, uh, Molokai. Yeah. However. I had I had worked with colleagues before that said Molokai yeah. that were from Molo, um, from Molokai. Molokai. So yeah. there there is always a good reference. You always have to know who you're talking to mm-hmm. when you say certain words. If I'm on Molokai, I'll say Molokai. If I'm off Molokai, not talking to a Molokai person, I'll say Molokai. So. Yes. No, like huge difference in, in especially in, when I'm writing on paper. I'm like, okay, do I add the okina? Do I not add the okina? Am this, I misspelling it? <laughs> this is what I say. So the okina is that is that glottal stop in words. This is what I say. If my tutu never used it, I'm not going to. Yes, <laughs> mm-hmm. that's my disclaimer. Color of Molokai. Gray. No. 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 <gasps> oh shoot. <laughs> uh, green. Green. Ah, oh, I'm thinking of um. We'll get back yeah. to that. So <laughs> flower. It, well, it's not really a. Fl- I, I wouldn't say it's a flower. What is the color is green, but it's more of a tree. Well, I, I guess it could be a flower. Molokai, you know, used as laulapa, used as medicine, used to uh, make oil, uh, used to dye. Oh, or, um, kukui. Yes, yeah. kukui. Uh, what's next to that? My island, lanai, um, color. Oh, see, yeah, this is where like I totally blank out. On, on I'm sorry. Orange. orange. I knew there was an orange in there, but I didn't know which I. <laughs> the flower is the same color. Well, it's not a flower; it's a vine. You can see it when you go to UH. You take that UH ramp. Oh, it's all I growing it. in there. Yes, I see it. Um, Used for medicine when you have a high fever. <laughs> oh my gosh! 
starts with a K, like everyone. Else. Kauna oa. Kauna oa. Let's move on. Okay, we're getting closer to your to your moku oahu. Color. Okay, yeah, that's yellow. Yellow. Okay, uh, flower. Yes. I don't even know oahu's flower. No, yeah, me neither. Ilima. Is it? Oh, that's is oh, it? Oh, look at that, Ilima. That's right. It is. Uh, Kauai. Okay, Kauai is purple. Kauai is purple. Flower. One, oh, I don't even know Kauai is even. Yeah. Flower. Even Kauai. It's a berry. Mokihana. Oh. Yes. Think of your rash at your neck. You ever oh, use mokihana? Yes. It burns. So yes. if you ever, if you ever mokihana, it burns. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Nihau, last one. Nihau. Oh my gosh. No, I, I, I think I'm missing need... one, but we'll come back to mm -hmm. it. Nihau. No, yeah, I'm sucking that missing what one because yeah, I was what like. Is Nihau? That's let's, wait. Let's go back. You said gray earlier. Gray belongs yeah, to Kahoolawe. Yeah. Their flower, there like a go. vine as well. Oh, that one is um. Same color as the the Hawaiian. You know, I know it, but it's like... 30 um, seconds. What? <laughs> 30 seconds. Oh. Um, hina, hina. My, I was going to say Pele's hair. <laughs> Pele, same thing. Okay, last one real quick. Nihau, do we know? Nihau, that one is Colored. white. White? Yes. And? But, pupu poo shell. Right? It's oh, the yeah. only island without a flower. Yeah. Nihau shells. There Nihau you go. Shells. Man, yeah. that was rough for us. You see what okay. happens when we get too deep in culture? Sometimes we forget the simple things. Hey, what's up, how's it? It is me, McCunny. Welcome to Culturize, our extended version. You get uh, a little bit of extra of, of us talking story about culture, sharing culture, learning culture. Uh, we barely made it through the color and flower of each other. <laughs> that's like, that's cultural suicide, let me tell oh, you. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, we were talking about uh, a hula, and, and of course, we, we do Tahiti, we do everything else. Do you remember your first hula? Oh, my first hula would have to be Kavika. You're better than me. Um, <laughs> well, cause, no, I let me finish. Do you remember the choreography to your first hula? That's that's more. Okay, important. never mind. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I retract. <laughs> See, no. I, I remember my first. I just don't remember the choreography. I am the worst at that. Um, when it comes to hula, this is what I want to talk about. Again, let's let's take it back to you and I on stage, and and we talked about it earlier. And some and, and when visitors come, they see us. Nine out of ten times, they have no idea what we're doing, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, some people don't understand. So, when they see us in, like, uh, how how would you? Let, let's focus on the women. When you see the women in coconut bras, and and grass or more skirts, that would be Tahitian, right? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and then grass skirts. We never, Hawaii never had grass skirts, right? It was uh, la'i or tea leaf, and mm -hmm. we'd shred it, and of course it would look like grass. So when, when yes. Hollywood came over, the visitors go, oh, look, it's a grass skirt. Grass skirts didn't come out till, I don't know, uh, Hollywood was introduced. Yeah. Um, what do you prefer, kahiko or awana? Oh, it would have to be kahiko. Yeah? Yeah. Um, Kahiko, I, me as well. I, even if you take it back to Mary Monarch, I love watching Kahiko Night. Mm -hmm. Awana, I hate to say it, but there's only so much crushed velvet and, and Ilima Lays I can handle, <laughs> right? Somebody do a fast song. Um, favorite Kahiko that you've ever done? Favorite ancient hula? Ka oh, man. That one will have to be, uh, my favorite Kahiko would be Opupui Kukalani. Whoa. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm going to brain fart. Totally don't remember what it's about. Do you? Um, that one was uh, it was a Kamehameha one. Wow. Yeah. Drum dance? No. Um, just, yeah, just Ipuheke. Mm. Um, that one I performed back in 2014 when I went to um, the hula competition in Cali, Yaoye Kala. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, I did that for my solo, um, my solo performance. Yeah. Preparing for hula. A lot of people don't realize it. When? How? How many months did you prepare for that solo competition in California? Oh, I would say like six months before, like six, seven months around there. And was so you did that? You did that one melee, which is that one song. Mm -hmm. You practiced for that long. How long were you on stage? Because a lot of people don't realize this, too, right? You practice what you say for ten months. Yeah, wrong. And yeah. how long was that song? 
I would say about five minutes, <laughs> like five, six minutes max, that whole performance. <laughs> Isn't it crazy? So that, that, that part of hula, a lot of people don't realize, even even if as show dancers, people mm-hmm. think we just automatically know this stuff, but it's it's the practice and this practice that goes mm-hmm. into it. Um, what do you prefer, hula, Tahitian, or South Pacific dances? We, we talked about it earlier, but... Oh, from, let's say this, from an entertainment standpoint, when we're on stage, what do you prefer? Hula more. Hula. Yeah. Okay, from Hawaii, of course. Uh, on a personal level, what do you prefer? Tahitian, Hawaiian, Samoan, Oh, man, it's Maori. just like one kind of close-cut race, but it would have to be hula. Wow. Hula is your thing. I like that. Um, are you still are you still practicing now hula dancing now? Not right now because I just set everything aside for mm. for just studying. So that that was your last competition. What 2010? Was your oh, last? No. Um, for hula it was mm. yeah 2014. Oh 14. Sorry. Yeah. Wow. I, I in fact I remember that because I we were doing a show and you just had come back, and I remember you you just won. You came back and we we're doing a show. I was like. Man, this is an entertainer. Um, <laughs> Awana, favorite number? Oh, hands down, it would be from Napala Palai, mm-hmm. um, Piri Kapeke Peke. Wow, that's yeah. a good one. Tell us about what that song is about. Oh, that one, it has to do with like like the many techies of how to um, catch someone's attention. <laughs> and like, <laughs> A lot of people don't realize how... how I hate to use this word, but sometimes how perverse we are in hula. <laughs> and that was basically a song about how to get somebody's attention. Um, it, here's another interesting, you may know it, you may not know it, Awana. Uh, so Awana is a contemporary name for, mm-hmm. for hula, right? Uh, which is when the introduction of ukulele, introduction mm-hmm. of uh, Western instruments. But the word Awana, do, do you ever hear the story about the word Awana? Actually, if, so, no, I haven't. When military ships used to come over to mm-hmm. Hawaii and the, and the freighters used to come over to the harbor, uh, they'd always have the hula girls at the pier welcoming them, right? And so uh, what would happen when the sailors came off or the visitors came off, the girls would awana off with them. They would wander off with them. Oh. So as you see a hula girl wandering or awana ing off with somebody, right? <laughs> so that, I, I don't, that, that became hula awana. Right, so I always like to joke about the counter or the deeper meaning, and I always would tell girls, I said, "Don't be a hula awana," <laughs> but I love hula awana. Just don't be like it. So that that what I was at the the word awana, contemporary hula awana means to wander. So was that like in the early 1900s? Around it, it was about the time when or? the first when the first ships started coming in oh, military. Okay. Because it. remember how they would stand. So the women would stand at the edge of the pier and and, and hula. And oh, the, okay. They would, the boys yeah. would dive into the harbor when they would throw coins, right? That's right. That's but right. The, the hula dancers would awana. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm kind of mentally drawing that time that timeline right there. It is. <laughs> uh, and that's history for you. It's something you didn't know. So, again, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about things that, that people see and don't really understand. So, mm-hmm. hula, of course, is our Hawaii dance, and we've been doing it. So, you got your favorites. 2014 was your last competition. Are you going to do uh, anything more? Other competitions? Are, are you. Well, over it. Oh no, I still got. I, I would say I got pretty like, maybe like five more, six more years. Yeah. And competition then, too. Yeah, competition nice. too. This whole year was act. Um, I kind of set aside this year for competition and studying. Mm. However, because of the current circumstances, right. you know. Right. I hear so you. now it's just dedicated to studying. So I want to say mahalo, mahalo, mahalo to you. But before you go, because I know we talked about Kapa Kava, um, you have never tried these yet. Yeah, I've never yeah, tried. You, you, you drink regular ava, right? Of yes. course. So Hawaii, I, I'll just share something with you guys real quick. Um, so ava, you may know as well. Ava, of course, Hawaiian. In Hawaii, we never use it as recreational purposes. We use it for ceremony and medicine. Uh, South Pacific, they use it for recreational purposes. So that's what we're going to do right now. Um, pick a flavor. Oh, there's flavors. <laughs> I'm t- watch, you're going you're gonna to blow your mind. Oh, my gosh. This is totally neat. Watermelon, to <laughs> uh, strawberry, or watermelon, mango, and oma'omao. And, you know, green. But, you know, I wanna, I'm just not going to pour it. Yeah. Through. 
I was actually looking at that one more. I think it was just because mm-hmm. of the color, because how it just stood out. <laughs> Called your name, right? So you tell me what you think. So we got to thank our friends from Kappa Kappa. Let's see here. I got watermelon mango. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Really right? You can do that all night. Not while you're oh, studying. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so enjoy that. I want to say mahalo, mahalo, mahalo for joining us. Um, your studies continued success in that. Uh, really quick, you have you have a project that you're working on, um, a, a very deep cultural project with one of your kumu. Really quick, tell us about it. Okay, so it's gonna be every Wednesday. Um, I don't know the cutoff because you know it's mm-hmm. holiday season, um, but every Wednesday at seven o'clock to eight thirties. Most of the times we go over it's. Um, the, the webinar it's called Polynesian ancestral knowledge so we bring so we bring in through the universal zoom mm-hmm. um universal cultural, zoom. yes <laughs> everything's on zoom nowadays but um bringing experts from all over polynesia to really share like their ike and of course like um during the show we kind of like compare and contrast nice. um between like the two different cultures so so if you want to get a little bit deeper into the culture side of Polynesian ancestral knowledge, go see my good friend Kalani Simeona. Mm-hmm. Um, brother, we'll see you soon on the stage. Thank you for joining us, this extended version. Don't forget to uh, hit the subscribe button right below. Thank you guys very much for joining Culturized. If you have a culture, remember to make it always rise and stay risen. Mm-hmm.